Thank you. You're welcome. Okay, so okay, so L'Hopital's rule: uh, suppose f and g are differentiable, and uh, g prime of x is equal to zero uh, near a, except possibly at a. Okay, uh, suppose uh, that the limit as x approaches a of f of x is equal to zero, and the limit as x approaches a of g of x is equal to zero or that uh, or that uh, the limit as x approaches a of f of x is equal to plus or minus infinity And the limit as x approaches a g of x is equal to plus or minus infinity okay. Um, in other words, uh, we have an indeterminate form of type uh, zero over zero or infinity over infinity. So L L'Hopital's rule, okay. Suppose F and G are differentiable and G prime of X um, is equal to zero near A, except possibly at A. Suppose that those two limits are zero or that you have those two limits. In other words, we have in, in, an indeterminate form of type zero over zero or infinity over infinity. Okay. Then um, the conclusion is that the limit as X purchase A of f of x over g of x is equal to the limit as x approaches a of f prime of x over g prime of x if the limit on the right exists or is infinity or minus infinity. Or is infinity or minus infinity. Let me just make this to read. Let me get rid of that. There we go.
Okay, there's L'Hopital's rule. Suppose F and G are differentiable and G, so F and G are differentiable and G prime of X is equal to zero near A ex, or except possibly at A. Suppose that both these limits in the numerator and denominator are zero or that they're both plus or minus infinity. Then this limit on the left equals that limit on the right. Um, if the limit on the right exists or is plus infinity, or minus infinity. Okay, so this is a L'Hopital's rule is something people often have trouble with. Uh, so uh, the best way to learn it is to break it down. Uh, and so in order for L'Hopital's rule to work, there are a few things that have to happen. Suppose, so you need F and G to be differentiable. You need g prime of x be zero near a, that's two. Two things, one, f and g are differentiable. Okay, so in order to use L'Hopital's rule, four things have to happen. Okay, one, let me, okay. one, f and g have to be differentiable. Okay, that's the one thing that has to happen. Two, uh, g prime of x has equal zero near a express, except possibly at a. g prime of x equals zero near a except possibly at a. It doesn't it, it could be zero at a too, but it doesn't have to. Sometimes it can't be zero at a. And sometimes you need it to be only near a and not including A, okay? You also need um, an indeterminate form of type zero over zero or infinity over infinity, right? Where the limit of the numerators are both zero or plus, both plus or minus infinity. So you need an indeterminate form of type zero over zero or infinity over infinity. Okay, so you need that. And four, you need that the limit on the right exists. This guy, this limit exists or is plus infinity or minus infinity. You need that that limit exists or is equal to infinity. And by infinity, I mean plus infinity, either positive infinity or negative infinity. Okay, so all of this complicatedness can be broken down into saying that the assumptions on L'Hopital's rule are four things. If these four things happen, then you can say that this limit is equal to that limit. That's L'Hopital's rule. The limit as x approaches a of, of f of x over g of x is equal to the limit as x approaches a of f prime of x over g prime of x if these four things happen. One, F and G have to be differentiable. Two, G prime of X equals zero near, near A, except possibly at A. Three, uh, you have an indeterminate form of type zero over zero or infinity over infinity. And four, the limit is X prime say if F prime of X over G prime of X exists or is equal to plus infinity or minus infinity, okay? When a limit is plus or minus infinity, it's not, it doesn't exist. But in this case, you don't need it to exist. Uh, it either exists, or is equal to plus infinity or minus infinity. Okay, so if the limit doesn't exist, but does equal plus infinity or minus infinity, then condition four is satisfied. And if all three other conditions hold, then you can use L'Hopital's rule in that case, okay? So in order to use L'Hopital's rule, four things have to happen. Then if all four of those things happen, L'Hopital's rule, says that this, these two limits are equal. Okay, that's L'Hopital's rule. So what I'm doing here is I'm breaking down L'Hopital's rule for you. This whole thing, this whole thing for L'Hopital's rule is being broken down this way. 
These are the four assumptions of Lobatel's rule. You show these four things hold, then this limit equals that limit. Okay? That's Lobatel's rule. Okay, and so I'm going to do this. This it's important to understand L'Hopital's rule. So I'm going to put a little thing here. And so what I want you to do is focus on this. When you study this lesson, focus on what's between um, these two lines. Okay. So between those two lines is explaining L'Hopital's rule. It's, Show those four things hold, then that limit equals that limit. Okay, so uh, this is a breakdown of L'Hopital's rule. All right. Okay, so that's L'Hopital's rule. Um, now um, you can you can generalize L'Hopital's rule to include other situations. So I will show you uh, such situations below. Okay. So there's there's slight changes you can you there's slight there's slight changes in the situation you can make where you can still apply L'Hopital's rule and reach the same conclusion that these two limits are equal. Okay. So uh, so the note here is that No, um, X approaches A, right? Wherever you saw X approaches A in L'Hopital's rule uh, can be replaced by um, X approaches A to the right. As X approaches A uh, to the right. Okay. Uh, also, um, it can be replaced by that, or it can be replaced by X. Um, let me just copy this whole thing. Or X approaches. Um, a to the left, or X approaches infinity, or X approaches minus infinity. Okay, so in L'Hopital's rule, uh, X approaches A can be replaced by X approaches A to the right, or X approaches A to the left, X approaches infinity, or X approaches minus infinity. Okay, so it doesn't change, um, it doesn't change the assumptions or conclusions, except you replace this X approaches A here with any of these four. And correspondingly, you change these X approaches A's to any of these four. So in the original L'Hopital's rule, wherever you see X approaches A, you could change it to exactly one. You can't change some of them to one and some of the other ones to another one, right? You have to change all the X approaches A's to exactly one of these four. So they're these four right here. And so you, so, uh, you choose A and the five, and they're all where, the, where you have a limit there. So you have a one, two, three, four, five, six, appear six times in the theorem, L'Hopital's rule. So you replace all six with any of the five and it works. Okay. And so this is a, that's a generalization of L'Hopital's rule. So another generalization is that um, it's also true, the theorem, uh, when f of a is equal to g of a, which equals zero, and f prime and g prime are continuous, and g prime of a 
uh, does not equal zero. Okay, so if you have that f of a equals g of a equals zero, f prime and g prime are continuous and g prime of a is not equal zero, then you can reach the same conclusion as Loki tells you. Okay, let's continue. So example one, find the limit as x approaches one of ln of x divided by x minus one. Okay, so we're going to find that limit using L'Hopital's rule. Yeah, question? question? No question? Okay. Uh, okay, so solution. Since, um, okay, so since the limit as x, since the limit as x approaches 1, of ln of x is equal to, does someone have a question? Okay, so there's no questions. Okay, so I'm just muting everyone's mic. Okay. Um, okay, so the limit as x approaches one of ln of x is equal to ln of one, which is equal to zero. And the limit as x approaches one of x minus one is equal to zero. Okay, so since uh, we have both those limits are zero, so the limit of the numerator is zero and the limit of the denominator is zero, that means that we have an indeterminate form of type zero over zero. Okay, so I'm just gonna copy this for a second. I'm gonna just Put this here for a bit so we can look at it. Uh, let me put down put the example one down here. Okay, so we want to find that limit. Wait, and Professor, so what I did can you here, go up really quick? Okay. Here? Uh, down a little bit. I just need to copy the note. This? Yeah. All right, I'm good, thank you. You're welcome. Okay. Um, okay, so what we did here is that, okay, so we showed this, right? So we showed this here. We showed that we have an indeterminate form of type zero over zero, which means type zero, zero, or infinity over infinity. Now, g of x is the denominator, which is x minus 1. And so this is the weird one that students usually have a problem with. So this is rarely ever an issue. Uh, and so luckily, most of the time, if you weren't even going to think about this one, it wouldn't affect the problem. But I'm going to include this in this discussion. So g of x is equal to x minus 1. right? So g prime of x is equal to 1. And so, uh, Oh, sorry, it does not equal zero, sorry. Uh, right, okay, well. Sorry, okay, sorry, this is not equal to zero. Near A, except possibly at A. Okay, this is not equal to zero. I think the formatting, I, I'm, I really thought I'd type that in. Okay, so, um, Okay, so this is not equal zero near A, except possibly at A, right? So then I was reading off of that. Okay, this is not equal zero near A, so it's not equal to zero. Okay, 
So here, g prime of x is equal to, uh, yeah, that's fine. Okay, so here, uh, g prime of x equals one, which does not equal zero, near x equals one, right? So if g prime of x always equals one, then it does not equal zero near x equals one, right? And so here, we sh I just showed this, okay? So, you should, so I showed those two things. G is differentiable. You can even find its derivative equal to one, right? And as for f of x, f of x is the numerator. f of x is equal to ln of x. And if you wanted to calculate its derivative, f uh, prime of x would equal to one over x. And so these two things show, you can see from those two things that we showed this, that f and g are both differentiable, right? You can calculate both their derivatives. g prime of x equals one, f prime of x equals one over x, and, and so that's, that's good. Okay, um, and so now you just calculate this limit. So what is this limit? Um, so you wanna calculate this limit, and so you calculate it, this limit. So the limit as x approaches one, in this problem, a is one. And so you now have the derivative in the numerator, which is one over x, that's f prime of x, and g prime of x is one. So you have one over x over one. And so you have the limit as x approaches one of that. And so that's one over one, which is one. That limit is one. And so that limit exists. And so it either exists or is equal to plus or minus infinity. And so we showed this. Okay, and so what we did was we showed um, all of these things hold. Okay, so since that happens and since the below happens, we can conclude by Lopital's rule that uh two limits are equal so we reach the conclusion that these two limits are the same okay and so we reach the conclusion uh that that limit equals that limit uh, now this limit f of x is ln of x right okay? that's it that's the numerator it's a numerator which is g of x is x minus one that's the denominator there. A is equal to one. A is equal to one, limit as x approaches one, right? So A is equal to one. Let's say of limit as x approaches one of f prime of x, which is one over x. So this is f prime of x and g prime of x, which equals one, which we calculated. Okay. And we found that that limit, we calculated that limit, we found it's equal to one. And so we get it's equal to one. And so we've, cal we've now calculated this limit by L'Hopital's rule to equal one. And that's it. We showed all four of these things are true, happen. And so we reach the conclusion that these two limits are equal and that limit equals one. And we're done. That li the original limit equals one. Okay, so that's example one. Um, example two, calculate. And so now we're gonna do uh, an infinite limit. So the limit as x approaches um, infinity uh, e to the x divided by x squared. Okay, so calculate that limit. Okay, uh, so we have that limit as x 
approaches infinity of e to the x. is equal to infinity. And that the limit and we have the limit as x approaches infinity of x squared is also equal to infinity. Okay, so we have the limit of both the numerator and denominator, both infinity. Um, okay, uh, so we have an indeterminate limit. We have an indeterminate form of type infinity over infinity. Okay, so we have an indeterminate form of type infinity over infinity because the limit of both the numerator and denominator are infinity, right? And so there are four things, again, to check to use L'Hopital's rule. These four things. Okay, so you have these four things to check. We have an indeterminate form of type infinity over infinity. And so we showed this already, right? Uh, now, g of x is x squared. g of x is equal to x squared. And so g prime of x is equal to 2x. Um, and so a here is infinity. Uh, and so and so this does not equal zero near infinity. Um, and so what that means is just that if you're thinking of, of arbitrarily large x values, if you think of large enough x values, it's not going to be zero, which is obvious because it's only zero when x equals zero. And so near infinity means that, that you could go sufficiently far out. You could think of sufficiently large x values. And no matter how many from that point on, uh, from that point on, all x values would make g prime of x non-zero. So you could say for every x greater equal to 1, g prime of x is not equal to 0, right? Or every x such that the absolute value of x is greater equal to 1, g prime of x is non-zero, right? So g prime of x is not equal to 0 near infinity is true. Um, and it doesn't have to be at infinity, so we don't have to worry about what that would mean. So that we showed this, okay? Um, so g prime of x, you see, is differentiable equals to 2x. f of x, if you think of f of x, f of x is the numerator, which is e to the x. And if you take the derivative, right, if you take the derivative of the exponential function, you get itself. So this is also equal to e to the x. And so f and g are both differentiable. And shall we show this? Um, and then if you were to calculate this limit, you have to show it's either exists as a, by exists, we mean it equals some number, zero, positive number, negative number, or it's plus infinity or minus infinity. So this is equal to the limit as X approaches infinity of F prime of X, which is E to the X, which is E to the X over G prime of X, which is two X, right? And then if you take the limit of this, uh, you still have infinity over infinity, right? Uh, and so the, and so, but, but now in, we've in a sense, in a sense, we've simplified the indeterminate form of type infinity over infinity, meaning our original function was e to the x over x squared. We had a second degree polynomial in the denominator. Now e to the x over 2x, we now have a first degree polynomial in the denominator. And so we have not, using L'Hopital's rule once, we have not found the answer yet, but we have simplified the problem. So using L'Hopital's rule once, even though it didn't get us the answer to what the limit was, 
we can use it to simplify the problem. And so we've succeeded at simplifying the problem. And so since we only simplified the problem, we need to use L'Hopital's rule a second time in order to be able to calculate the limit. Okay. Um, so uh, what the above limit shows us is that we need to use L'Hopital's rule again in order to solve the problem. Using it once did not, using it once does not let us calculate the original limit. It does, however, simplify the problem enough so that when we use L'Hopital's rule a second time, we will have a cal calculable limit, okay? We still can't calculate this limit. So what L'Hopital's rule would say is that our original limit would equal this, right? So we're gonna use L'Hopital's rule a second time and say, okay, we're, this limit is going to equal to something else. And then we can work backwards and say that our original limit equals this thing, which then equals the thing that using L'Hopital's rule a second time gives us the value for, okay? So let's do that. Okay. Um, so we reuse f of x and g of x notation to describe the numerator and denominator of the second limit. Okay, so the new f of x is, e, is still e, e to the x, and the new g of x is what changes, it's now 2x. Okay, so, um, okay, so if you take the limit as x, as x approaches infinity of e to the x, it's still equal to infinity. And the limit as x approaches infinity of 2x is equal to infinity, okay? So you have an indeterminate, so we have an indeterminate form of type infinity over infinity. All right, and so if you apply the four steps again, not here, here. Okay, so these are the original four things we need to show. Okay, so we showed this. So this is usually the first thing you wanna look at. Okay, is it an indeterminate form of type zero, zero, or infinity, or infinity? So I, I keep doing that first. And so my suggestion is first check that. Now, g prime of x, so g of x is 2x. Right? Now, g prime, remember, we're reusing g of x for the new denominator. And so this g of x is different than the other g of x in, from earlier in the same problem. Okay, so g prime of x equals 2. And that does not equal zero near um, infinity. Okay. So since g prime is equal to two, it's not zero everywhere. And so it's certainly not zero near infinity. It's not zero anywhere. So it's not infinity near something, in this case, infinity. Okay. So this shows that the second thing also holds. So we showed this also. Okay. And then f and g are differentiable, right? So you can see that um, that's obvious, right? Here f is e to the x, here g is 2x. So they're both differentiable, okay? Okay, and so this is 
obvious. Okay. And the last thing is that this limit exists or is equal to plus or minus infinity. Now, in the last, in the first time we use L'Hopital's rule, we actually have not yet shown the fourth point in the first L'Hopital's rule, right? And so when you use L'Hopital's rule twice, you actually don't use, use L'Hopital's rule twice and you look at the first thing time you use it and the second time you use it. You actually technically prove the second L'Hopital's rule first and we're working backwards. The second time you use L'Hopital's rule actually justifies using it the first time. Okay, so I'll show you what I mean. So this thing is not, we have not yet, um, we've not yet shown this for the first time we use L'Hopital's rule. We are actually going to be able to do it for the second time we use it first. Okay, so that limit, um, we not show it exists or is equal to plus or minus infinity. Well, this thing is equal to the derivative of f, which is e the x. This is e the x, and the denominator is two. And this limit is the x approaches infinity. Okay. okay. Uh, and so we have that. Okay, so this is in in this case we're replacing the a with infinity because we can do that. All right. Okay, good. Okay. So now this limit is equal to, well, the numerator goes to infinity and the denominator uh, stays at two. So this limit is infinity. Okay, so that limit is infinity. And so we've shown the fourth thing. Those are the first three. This is the fourth one. So we just showed this. Okay, we showed this, that this limit exists or is equal to plus infinity or minus infinity. We showed it equals to plus infinity. So we've now shown all four things in L'Hopital's rule. And so we reached the conclusion. So since we have shown all four assumptions of L'Hopital's rule holds, we can conclude by the same theorem that, and so remember the conclusion is that in the original theorem, go all the way back here, all right, that this limit equals this. That's the conclusion, okay? And so this limit equals that. Now we have a new F and G, right? So the new F and G are from this limit. Right? It's this limit that we care about. And so this limit that limit is now equal to the limit as x approaches infinity of the derivative which is still e the x over the denominator, which is now two. And from one of the assumptions that we showed, we showed that that limit was either exists or is plus or minus infinity. And so we showed it's infinity. And so we can conclude by the theorem that this limit is equal to infinity. See that? Okay, so we use L'Hopital's rule to show that this left limit is equal to this right limit, which is equal to infinity, okay? Now that we know this, we can use this conclusion to, to show, to justify using L'Hopital's rule the first time. Okay, so this is counter what your intuition would tell you. You would think that you, when you use L'Hopital's rule twice, that you would use the first justification of L'Hopital's rule, you would use the first time to justify the second. The reverse happens. You use L'Hopital's rule five, twice, first once, and then a second time. 
But the first time you want to use L'Hopital's rule, you can't yet use it. Instead, you see the thing that you want to conclude. You want to say you have a limit and you want to buy L'Hopital's rule, that limit you have is equal to another limit. You can't conclude that because you can't calculate the limit on the right side. So instead, you apply L'Hopital's rule again. And you say that the limit on the right side is equal to another limit using L'Hopital's rule again. But now in this problem, when you use L'Hopital's rule again, you can use L'Hopital's rule because the, the thing on the right a second time is a calculatable limit. And so when you use L'Hopital's rule the second time, you then find that your second limit is now a value. It's now infinity. And so now you can go backwards to the first time you wanted to use it. And you've now shown this. We've now showed this. Now showed this. I'm going to put this in calculate in, cal in capital letters because this was the problem. And this, this was part of the problem that we didn't know what this limit was. We didn't know it existed, or if it was plus or minus infinity, we didn't know what this limit was. Uh, but using L'Hopital's rule again, we found that this limit was plus infinity. And so we've now actually shown the fourth point for the original L'Hopital's rule. And so we've now justified saying that our original limit is equal to this limit. That's the point of using it the first time, okay? Working backwards, we can use, we can justify using L'Hopital's rule the uh, first time in quotations, okay? First time meaning it's the first time tech you, is that, you're sort of using it second, but you're using it first. I'm gonna put quotations on the first time. So I think you know what I mean, maybe. So that is your original limit. We're now justified because we showed all four of these things to say that our original limit is equal to this limit, okay? So now we're justified to say that. Now, before we justified that equality, we already justified this one, that this was equal to this limit. And so before we knew the first equality, we actually knew the second one. And that limit, well, wait. This, So there's a two there. So I ever had that here. It's just just a two there. Okay. So that that's two because I already said that there. So this is equal to two, which is equal to infinity. Okay. Okay. So the idea that the proof was this: we had this original limit we wanted to calculate. Now, when you use L'Hopital's rule, you know you, what the goal is to say that this limit is equal to the limit of the derivative of the numerator over the derivative of the denominator. There's four assumptions you need to show hold. The first three you can show. The fourth one, though, requires you to calculate this limit and say it either exists or is plus or minus infinity. You can't do that. So instead, you say, okay, I can't complete the justification of this equality. Let me keep going almost as if I had succeeded doing this and use L'Hopital's rule on this limit to calculate it. Then using L'Hopital's rule, you want to say if this limit is equal to the limit of the derivative of the numerator, which is itself, over the derivative down, which is two. And so you do succeed at showing this equality using L'Hopital's rule because what's different is this limit is calculatable. It's equal to infinity. And so since you know this limit is infinity, the fourth assumption that you couldn't originally prove in the first equality, you can prove here. And so L'Hopital's rule works for this second equality. Once it works for this second equality, since you know that the right-hand limit is infinity, you've actually succeeded now in calculating this limit as being infinity. So after using L'Hopital's rule here, you now see that this limit is infinity. And so when you want to use L'Hopital's rule the first time, you have the first three conditions hold already. And the fourth one that required you to find this limit you've now succeeded after using L'Hopital's rule the second time. And so you now know that this is infinity, which means it either exists or is plus or minus infinity. 
and so now you justify using Lobital's rule for this equality. And so putting them together, L'Hopital's rule the first time says this equality holds. Using L'Hopital's rule the second time tells you that this equality holds. And this limit is infinity. And so that means that your original limit is equal to infinity using L'Hopital's rule twice. And so we're done. We calculated it to be infinity and we're done. Okay? Done. We calculated the limit. All right, so that's example uh, two. Let's look at example five. Okay, so example five is find, find uh, the limit as x approaches pi to the left. Of sine x divided by one minus cosine x. Okay, so find the limit as x approaches pi to the left of sine x over one minus cosine x. Okay, so the, the thing with this example is it's pointing, the point of this example is to show that sometimes if you use L'Hopital's rule, you reach the wrong answer, okay? So sometimes using L'Hopital's rule, you reach the wrong answer. And the reason why isn't because there's something wrong with L'Hopital's rule, it's because you, you can't use it. Okay, so solution to this problem. Uh, this problem, um, if, you try to use L'Hopital's rule in this example, you reach the wrong conclusion slash wrong answer, okay? And so, um, and so the reason is, is this an, so the question uh, that's a, an important question to ask when you use L'Hopital's rule is, do you have an indeterminate form of type zero over zero or infinity over infinity? Okay. And so if the answer is yes, you may be able to use L'Hopital's rule, right? Because there are four conditions and this is one of them. And so for all four hold, including this one, then you can use L'Hopital's rule, right? This holds and the other three use L'Hopital's rule. If this fails, then you automatically know you cannot use L'Hopital's rule, okay? All conditions, all four have to hold. And so once one of them fails, that means you cannot use it. And so for this problem, well, take the limit as x approaches pi to the left of sine x. What do you get? You get zero. So first, when you take the limit as x approaches Pi, as x approaches pi uh, to the left of sine x, well, that's equal to sine of pi because left and right limit doesn't make a difference here. And that's equal to zero. When you have a continuous function, taking left and, or right limits or just using a limit, you get the same value. And so since sine is a continuous function, uh, the limit as x approaches pi to the left is the same as the limit as x approaches pi. That's only it's only because sine of x is a continuous function. So the limit as x approaches pi to the left of sine x does equal zero. And so, it, so you're not looking at infinity over infinity now. It has to be zero over zero if it's either. Right? But now let's take the limit as x approaches pi still to the left. of one minus cosine x, what do you get? Well, um, this is a continuous function. And so you can just plug in pi. So this is equal to one minus cosine of pi. But cosine of pi is minus one, it's not one. Cosine of pi is minus one. So this is one minus, not one, it's one minus negative one. And what's one minus negative one? 
it's equal to two. Okay, one minus negative one is one plus one, which is two. And so that means this is not an indeterminate form of type zero over zero. It's zero over two. Okay, so this is not, so you cannot use L'Hopital's rule here. Okay, so in this, you, so you cannot use L'Hopital's rule in this example because you do not have an indeterminate form of type zero over zero or infinity over infinity, okay? Zero over two. And so instead you just have to calculate the limit directly, which you can do. So you have this limit here. And so, so you have to, it's important to know when to use local tells rule and when not to. Again, all four conditions have to hold. The first one to check is an indeterminate form type zero over zero or infinity over infinity. If that fails, you automatically know you can't use it. If it works, then you have to try the other three. Okay, so this limit is equal to, now calculate the limit of the numerator and denominator. So the limit of the numerator is zero and the limit of the denominator is two. Zero over two is zero. We're good, that's it. So the answer is zero. The answer is zero by direct computation. Okay, you do not need to apply a theorem, an advanced theorem to calculate this limit. So sometimes the easy problems could, you can get wrong because you think of, you're, you're thinking too complicated, right? And this is not a difficult problem like the last example. This is just directly calculating a limit. Okay. And though it's directly calculating a limit where it's different than the value you would get using L'Hopital's rule incorrectly. Okay. So we're done uh, with that. Now let's talk about, um, okay, there's a lot more to talk about. Let's talk about indeterminate products. Okay. So if the limit as X approaches A of F of X is equal to zero, and the limit as x approaches a of g of x is equal to infinity or minus infinity, then it isn't clear what the value of the limit as x approaches a of f of x times g of x is. Okay, so it's not clear what that limit will be because you're taking the limit of a product where one limit is zero and the other one's infinity or minus infinity. And so it's hard, so it's hard to know who wins the race, right? Uh, so if F wins, the answer will be zero. If G wins, the answer will be infinity. Okay, so you're multiplying two things where one thing is going to zero and the other thing is going to infinity. Uh, so it's a race. And depending on which function wins, changes what the answer will be. Okay, um, it will be infinity and and uh, uh, or minus infinity. Okay. Now there's also another possibility where the two are kind of going at similar speeds, where they sort of cancel each other out. Okay, uh, and the book puts it this way: or there is a compromise.
where the answer is finite, is a finite non-zero number. Okay, so in, in a sense, when you have these type of problems, uh, it could be zero, it could be plus or minus infinity, or it could be any finite number. So uh, just seeing this type of problem does not mean you could dwindle down the possible an answer, right? Okay, uh, and so, uh, but, but you can break it down and see how you get each type of answer though, right? If F wins, it's zero. G wins, it's plus or minus infinity. If there's a compromise, if they're both going at, at, at same speed, then that's when you get a finite non-zero number. Okay, so this kind of limit is called um, an indeterminate form of type zero times infinity. Okay. Uh, and so this matches your intuition. You have f of x times g of x. If the limit of one thing is zero and the other is infinity, it's type zero times infinity. Okay? Before it was zero over zero or infinity over infinity because we were dividing two fractions. Now we're multiplying them. So it's type zero times infinity. Okay. okay. Uh, we can deal with, uh, with this by writing the product Fg as a quotient. Okay, so what do I mean by that? So if you have f times g, if you have f times g as functions, proxy functions, you can think of it as f divided by one over g. Okay, or uh, you could say f times g is equal to g divided by one over f. Okay. Okay, and so this converts the given limit into an indeterminate form of type zero over zero. or infinity over infinity. Okay, so okay, so mathematicians love to do this. If we know how to solve a problem already in a certain way, sometimes we just want to convert our, 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 our given problem into another form in which we can then solve it. So in this case, if we can't find the limit of a product, just express the product as a quotient. And since we can calculate the limit of a quotient, we can now calculate the limit of the product. That makes sense? So instead of thinking of it as f times g, think of it as f over one over g, or g over one over f, okay? Since f is type zero and G is type infinity. Well, F in the numerator is the zero. If G is infinity, one over G is one over infinity, which is zero. So F over one over G is of type zero over zero. So I'll put that in here. This is type zero over zero. F over one over G. Or you could think as F times G, G over one over F. Well, G is type infinity. F is type zero, so one over zero is infinity. So this is type infinity over infinity. Okay. So you can take your original product and you can express it as a type zero over zero or a type infinity over infinity. And then you can apply the original rule we had before, Lobital's rule. So calculating F over one over G or G over one over F. And when you calculate that limit, you've actually calculated the limit of F times G. Okay, and so that does it. So let's look at example six and example six will illustrate. 
this, this problem, type of problem. So example six is evaluate the limit as X approaches zero to the right. Oh, part, okay. Zero to the right of X ln of X. Okay, so we now see we have a product, right? Uh, and so let's look at the solution of the problem. Uh, so the given limit is indeterminate of type. Uh, well, x is a, is is limit zero. But if you take the limit as x approaches zero to the right of ln of x, you actually get negative infinity. So this is of type uh, zero times infinity. Okay. It's actually the the limit of the second one is minus infinity, but that that doesn't matter. Um, Okay, so it's so the given limit is in the term of type zero times infinity because the, the limit of the second thing is minus infinity. That's fine. Okay, and so we just need to convert it um, into type zero over zero or infinity over infinity. Um, so let's do this quickly. Uh, so if we take the limit as x approaches zero to the right. Uh, x ln of x. Uh, this is equal to the limit as x approaches 0 to the right of ln of x divided by 1 over x. Okay, so it just instead of multiplying by x, you divide by 1 over x. And so now you have an indeterminate form of type infinity over infinity. Uh, so using L'Hopital's rule, you can say that this limit is equal to this next limit I'm gonna write down, uh, zero to the right. And so using L'Hopital's rule, you get that the derivative of the numerator is one over X and the derivative of the denominator is negative one over X squared. And so, that's, uh, so this equality is due to L'Hopital's rule. Well, then you simplify it. This is equal to the limit as x approaches zero to the right of negative x. And now the limit of that is zero. And that's it, we're done. Okay, so the given limit is of type zero times infinity, this limit all the way on the left. Then you just rewrite it as ln of x of one over x, apply L'Hopital's rule to say this is equal to this, and then this is equal to ne limit of negative x, which is zero, and it's done, okay? Um, so A the second, yes? Um, the derivative of one over x is a, uh... How did you get negative one over x squared for the derivative? Okay, so of one it's the x? derivative. Uh, it's the derivative of one over x. So d d x of one over x is oh, equal to oh, because it's equal to one over is equal to one to the negative one power. So you uh multiply by negative one and then and then uh subtract one from the uh exponent, right? Correct. So when you subtract one from the exponent, you get negative two. Yeah. All right. That makes sense? Yeah, that makes sense. Okay. Yeah. So you just, so it's when you take the derivative, right? X to negative one, you move the negative one in front, which means it's negative. And then you subtract one, so you get negative two. And negative X, negative two, this is an exponential form. You could also write it in this form negative one over X squared. And so ddx of one over X is negative one over X squared. Okay, uh, side work. Okay, okay. So, uh, and just want to point out the second equality here is justified by using L'Hopital's rule. So, by L'Hopital's rule, you have the second equality. This is just re, this is just algebraically re-expressing x on the x is that over that, 
and then this limit that re expressing this equality is expressing this as negative x, and that's just obviously limit that limit of that is definitely zero. Okay, so the the middle equality, this second equality is the thing that requires uh, some, some thought. Okay, so that's uh, example six. Okay, so hopefully that's making sense. Uh, okay, so next is on uh, indeterminate differences. Okay, so we dealt with quotients, we dealt with products, and now we're going to deal with indeterminate differences. If the limit as x approaches a, of f of x is equal to infinity um, and the limit as x approaches a of g of x is equal to infinity then the limit limit as x Limit as x approaches a of f of x minus g of x right and that limit um, is called um, an indeterminate form of type infinity minus infinity. Okay, so again, there is a contest between F and G. Okay, it, so if F wins, the answer is infinity. If G wins, the answer is minus infinity. Okay, and then if there's a compromise, if they compromise, you know, they're both going at the same speed. Um, if they compromise, the answer is a finite number. It could be zero, could be non-zero. Okay, so let's look at an example. So this is indeterminate differences. It's called an indeterminate form of type infinity minus infinity. Let's see if this looks all right. Under yeah, looks good. Okay. Okay, so those are three things that could happen. So this is example seven. So example seven is compute uh, the limit as x approaches pi over two. Um, from the left of secant x minus tan x. Okay, so compute the limit as x approaches pi over two from the left of secant x minus tan x. And so solution. Okay, so first we have this limit, which I'm gonna copy, paste. Okay, so I have to type it again. That's equal to, um, equals to that limit of one over cosine x, because that's secant x is one minus cosine x minus sine x over cosine x, because that's 10 x. Okay, okay so then that's equal to, um, well, the numerator, 
if you just combine fractions, they both have a denominator cosine x. So this is one minus sine x over cosine x, right? Combining two fractions with the same um, denominator. Okay, well now if you use L'Hopital's rule, you, sh you show those four conditions hold. Uh, with those four conditions holding in this example, you get that that's equal to the limit of Yeah, that's equal to the limit of the derivative of the numerator, which is minus cosine x, over the derivative of the denominator, which is minus sine x. Okay, well, what is that limit equal? Uh, the negatives cancel, so you get cosine x over sine x. But if you take the limit, the, the limit of the numerator is zero, and the limit of the denominator is one. You get zero over one, which is zero. Okay. Uh, and so this is, um, so I'm actually going to do this. I'm going to put the equals here equals zero over one equals zero. And so this is um, by um, trig identities because secant x is one over cosine x, tan x is sine x over cosine x. This is by combining fractions, right? This fraction minus that fraction, they both have the same denominator. Um, now saying this is equal to this, by that means this equals sine. So it's just finding this equals this by combining fractions. Now this next step is saying this thing equals this thing. This is by L'Hopital's rule. Okay. And then this is by calculating the limit. Okay, and so you get the answer is zero. Okay, so that's example seven. Okay, let's keep going. So the next thing is indeterminate powers. So several uh, indeterminate forms arise from the limit. So if you didn't think there were enough, there's, there's more now. So the limit as x approaches a of f of x raised to the g of x. Okay, so if you, so you have this limit. And so the, here are different forms. One is that if you have the limit as x approaches a, f of x is equal to zero. And the limit as x approaches a of g of x is equal to zero. This is type zero raised to zero, right? Because zero raised to zero, right? Makes sense because limit of f is zero, limit of g is zero. It's type zero raised to zero. Type two is, I'm just going to change some of the numbers. So I'm going to copy and paste this to speed this up. Um, if this, instead of zero, this is infinity and this is zero and it's type infinity raised to the zero. Okay, so if the base, the limit of the base is infinity and the limit of the exponent is zero, it's type infinity raised to the zero. Um, if you have this one where the limit of the base is um, one and the limit of the exponent is plus or minus infinity, this is type one raised to the plus or minus infinity. Or actually just, right, just one to the infinity. Okay.
Okay, so we now have three. We have three addi additional forms: type zero to the zero, type infinity to zero, type one to the infinity. Okay, each of these three cases uh, can be treated by taking uh, so either by taking the natural logarithm. Uh, so if you let y equal to f of x raised to the g of x, then um, ln of y is equal to g of x ln of f of x. Or by writing, um, or by writing uh, f of x raised to the g of x. is equal to e raised to the g of x times ln of f of x. Okay, so either method leads to an indeterminate product which we showed earlier how to do. You take an indeterminate product and you write it as an indeterminate quotient, zero over zero over infin or infinity over infinity. And so this is a two-step procedure. You take any of these three, you, if you have this limit of f of x raised to g of x, you have type zero to the zero, type infinity to zero, or type one to infinity. If you have any of these three types for this type of limit, just either take L, let y equal f of x raised to g of x, and then consider ln of y, which equals g of x times ln of f of x. Then ln of y is an indeterminate product, which you can write as a quotient. So you can write as ln of f of x over one over g of x, or you can write as g of x over one over ln of f of x. Find the limit of the indeterminate type, indeterminate form type zero over zero or infinity over infinity. Then you do L'Hopital's rule and you get the limit of ln of y. And once you find the limit of ln of y, you then find the limit of y, which is the limit of f of x raised to g of x. Or you do something similar here. This is an indeterminate product. You write it as an indeterminate form of type 0 over 0 or infinity over infinity. Uh, when you calculate, you're finding the limit of this. And when you find the limit of this, you can then find the, um, you then found the limit of the uh, original thing. OK. So let's, uh, let's do an example. Okay, so example eight. Calculate uh, the limit um, as x approaches um, zero to the right of one plus sine four x raised to the cotangent of x power. Okay, let's find the limit as x approaches zero to the right of one plus sine four x raised to the cotangent x power. Okay, so we so uh, solution. Uh, so first, notice that as x approaches uh, zero to the right. We have that um, we have is that one plus sine four x um, approaches. Uh, so, so if you plug in zero, you get sine of zero, which is zero. So approach, that approaches one, and you have that cotangent x approaches. Uh, well, cotangent x is cosine x over sine x. Um, and, and so you get, um, you get 1 over 0, which is infinity. So this approaches infinity. 
So the given limit is indeterminate of type, if you don't have to get specific here, but, but the, the base one plus sine four X goes to one and the exponent goes to infinity. So it's the indeterminate of type one to the infinity. Okay, so we have two methods. And so we're going to use uh, the first one. Let y equal to uh, this thing, thing you're taking the limit of. One plus sine four X uh, raised to the cotangent X power, because we just showed it's type one to the infinity, right? Um, then uh, find ln of y. ln of y is equal to ln of that, which is cotangent x using the third law of logarithms. You can move the exponent in front. And so you get that, okay? So you get ln of y is equal to that. Um, uh, so uh, L'Hopital's rule tells us that well, if you take the limit as x approaches zero to the right of ln y, that's equal to uh, the limit as x approaches zero to the right of x approaches zero to the right of, okay, so you have uh, cotangent x times this, right? So you can think of this as ln of one plus sine four x divided by one over cotangent x. I'll write that one over cotangent x, okay? And that's equal to the limit of, well, now uh, you still have the numerator is the same. So the numerator is ln of one plus sine four x, sine four x, and the denominator, well, one over cotangent x is tan x. So that's tan x. Um, and now this is equal to uh, the limit as x approaches zero of, um, using L'Hopital's rule, take the derivative of the numerator. Um, and so the numerator um, becomes one over one plus sine four X times the derivative of one plus sine four X, which is four cosine of four X. And the denominator, the derivative of 10 X is secant squared X. And so you get that using L'Hopital's rule. And if you calculate that limit, you get four over one um, over one. So this equals four by direct calculation, plugging in zero for X because it's continuous, okay? Um, and so L'Hopital's rule, uh, so we use it in the third equal sign below. Okay, so this third equal sign here, this one, is where we use L'Hopital's rule. That's where we use L'Hopital's rule, okay? This is just writing this as a fraction. This is just saying, changing one over cotangent x to tan, to tan x, and now in this equal sign, we didn't use L'Hopital's rule. This is a, the last equal sign is the direct computation of the limit of something that's continuous and which you can find the actual value there. Okay, and so the answer to that is four. Um, so, so far, we have calculated the limit of ln y. The goal is to calculate the limit of y. And so we're almost there. Um, and so um, the limit of the original thing Example eight. Okay, calculate this limit. Okay, so now we calculate that limit. 
that's equal to the limit as x as x approaches zero to the right of y, because that's what we let y equal to. Well, then that's equal to um, the limit as x, as, as x approaches zero of e raised to the ln y, because y is the same as e to the ln of y. Um, but we calculated ln of y. The limit of ln y is four. So this is equal to e to the fourth power. Now we're done. Okay, the limit of the original thing is equal to the limit of y, which equals limit of e to the ln y. We found the limit of ln y is four. So the limit of e to the ln y is e to the four. We're done. Okay, and so that's example eight. And so I just need a few more minutes and then we're done. Uh, this is example nine. Okay, find, um, find the limit. Find the limit as x approaches zero of x to the x power. Okay, so this is an indeterminate so solution. This is an indeterminate uh, limit. And so um, x raised to the x is equal to e to the ln x. But then you take that thing and you raise it to the x power because x is the base x is the same as e to the ln x and you raise that to the x power. And if you raise e to two powers, it's the same as multiplying them. So this is e to the x ln x. Um, Uh, so in example six, we showed that the limit as x approaches zero of x ln x is equal to zero. That means that um, the limit, that means the limit as x approaches zero of x the x, which is equal to the limit as x approaches zero of e to the x ln x. Well, the limit of the exponent is zero. This is equal to e to the zero, which is one. And then we're done. Okay, uh, so uh, done. So that's example nine. And so we're done with example nine and we're done with section 5.8, okay? So that is the um, end of 5.8. Okay, so I'm quickly gonna assign homework in a second. So this is end of 5.8. So homework is, um, so the homework is the next homework assignment, um, which is on 5.8. Uh, okay, so the next homework is, Homework 12 on 5.8, okay? So homework uh, 12. So homework 12 on 5.8 is due next class, okay? So do the homework for 5.8 for next class on Wednesday. Um, next class on Wednesday. Professor. Yeah? Uh, can you do, um, explain to me about four, cosine 4x? How do you get that? Sure. Okay, here, right? Yeah. If you take, uh, so we have here, we apply L'Hopital's rule for this equal sign, right? And so you oh. can apply L'Hopital's rule. And so that means the limit of this is the limit of the derivative of the numerator over the derivative of the denominator. And so my claim here is that the derivative 
of this numerator is is four cosine four x over one okay. plus sine four x. Okay. okay. So let me just so side work here. Um, if you were to take the if you take the derivative of the numerator, right? Th you remember this is the numerator. Yeah. Okay. So take the derivative of that. Uh, well, there's a formula we went over. Right? And so the formula says that if you take the if you take the derivative of ln of a function of x, it's equal to f prime. It's equal to f the derivative of f divided by f of x. Okay. Uh, and so in order to find the derivative of ln of this function, the function is one plus, uh, the function is one plus sine of 4x. So here, um, f of x in the formula is equal to one plus sine 4x, right? So, so the derivative of that function, f prime of x, is equal to the derivative of that, which is four cosine 4x, okay? Um, and, and also then you can calculate the second derivative from the first derivative. The second derivative is then the derivative of, oh wait, no, we don't need the second derivative. Okay, so we have the first derivative, four cosine four x. And so by our formula, we have that this is equal to the derivative, which is four cosine four x, uh, divided by the original function f of x, which is one plus sine four uh, x. See that there? Yeah, got it. Okay, so you can look that over if you want. It's going to be online, the notes. And so you can go back if you want and look at this a little bit more. And so that explains why when we use L'Hopital's rule here, um, I'm saying that this limit of this is equal to the limit of this, where this is the limit of the derivative of the numerator, which is this, times the derivative of the denominator, which is that, right? The derivative of tan x is secant squared x, right? Also yep. note that uh, ddx of 10 X uh, is secant squared X, right? All right, thank you. Make sense? You're welcome. Okay, so I'll see all of you on Wednesday next class. And remember homework 12 on 5.8 is due next class on Wednesday. Okay, have a good rest of your day. Uh, see you next time. Uh, professor. Yeah? I was wondering if you were going to post the recordings for the previous two classes for uh, 6.4 and 6.5. Uh, so like I said, the, the website is not allowing me to upload the videos. I've, I've tried every video. It's not letting me upload them. Um, are you saying you want the video? Do you want, do you want to look at the videos for 6.4 and 6.5? Uh, yeah. Okay. So I'll try. What I'll do is try to get the videos on YouTube. I have, if okay. you go on YouTube and you type in my name, Michael Pendazis, there's a YouTube page for that. Uh, and so um, I will try to get those videos on the YouTube page since the website's not working for you, okay? Okay, thank you. Oh, okay, I just need a little time for that because it takes time to, to do that. So you won't yeah, be up the today. Yeah, is it's gonna be a while, Maybe. yeah. Uh, so what do you All need, right. 6.4 and 6.5? Yeah, 6.4 and 6.5. Okay, so it takes time to do every video. So I'm going to focus on those two videos on the site. Okay. All right. Okay, I'll see you all of you Wednesday. Bye, everybody.